Welcome to Talking Giants presented by SeatGeek. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. And round one is in the books. And welcome Deontay Banks, Maryland cornerback, to the New York Giants. Giants had pick 25, traded uh, traded that pick to move up one spot. They traded uh, their first fifth rounder and their first seventh rounder in this draft. And they went out and got a corner after their, the wide receivers all went off the board four <laughs> picks in a row. Yeah, man, there was a... Uh little bit of panic in the Giants war room it seems when all those wide receivers are flying off the board there there's definitely like we're streaming and we're like is there seriously going to be a run of four straight wide receivers because there was a point Bobby right where we got to like pick 17 pick 18 and we're thinking to ourselves the board is setting up nice we may land one of these receivers yeah pick 19 is uh off the you know pick 19 is finished and we're like okay we have you know five picks and ahead of us there's the four wide receivers, and then they literally went a 20, 21, 22, and 23, uh, starting with Jans, JSN, Quentin Johnson, Zay Flowers, and then Jordan Addison to the Vikings at, at 23. Uh, and Joe Shane said it. like He said, hey, uh, the wide receivers going off the board, mm-hmm. our first round grades were getting depleted, and we kind of, you know, we had some talks with Jacksonville earlier in the day of what it would take to move up that spot. Yeah. And they pulled the trigger on it and went and got their guy uh, out of Maryland and Deontay yeah. Banks. Do you want to start with the trade, or do you want to get into the player first? Um, we could go either way. I mean, let, let's let's go into the player first, and then we'll talk about like you know what they sure. did to to go get Deontay Banks. So obviously, we talked about Deontay Banks in our preview pod. Um, cornerback was obviously a huge position in need, and what we think is one of the deeper positions in this draft. Um, six foot, 197 pounds, 31 and three eighths inch arms. So he has the size for that outside corner tested extremely well. At the combine with a four, three, five, 42 inch vertical jump, uh, was a press man corner at Maryland. Like they, they let him play in a lot of man coverage. Now I want to talk about some of the issues he had in man. And I thought, I actually think he's better in zone right now. And man, his highlights will be in man coverage. But there's also a lot of low light. So yeah. this is a pick where they're going to have to coach this guy up. But he has all the talent in the world. And again, he fits the profile to be a, a good man cover corner in the NFL eventually. Yeah. Deontay Banks, six foot, 197 pounds, 31 to 3 eighth inch arms. Went to the University of Maryland, 22 turning 23 in March. So not super young, but also not old. I still think, you know, the, the overall age uh, you know, blueprint of what Joe Shane's doing. I think that's still intact, right? So we're checking number one thing off the box of a, of a trend from last year, um, still intact. And also a trend that was intact from last year, the athlete, right? One of the fastest 40 times in the draft. Top um, 30 visit too. Top 30 visit. That was another trend that we established last year. Um, Deontay Banks, that was a top 30 visit. And then also like, I, you know, we hate bringing it up. But we're going to bring it up. 9.99 relative athletic score? Yeah, 9.99 relative athletic score. Uh, and, I mean, that I mean, 42-inch vertical match with a 4 3 five, 40, which I think might have been the second fastest corner time at the combine outside of DJ, DJ Turner, Turner, the, yeah. the slot, uh, the guy who I think will be a slot corner out of Michigan. Um, so this – this is a, a a move. So they they traded up. Let's 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 talk about it before okay. we get into yeah. him as a player. Like, you know, everyone's got their thoughts on him. We'll break down his game. We we went back and rewatched four games of film versus Ohio State, SMU. The SMU game was very frustrating because he basically never lined up on Rasheed Rice besides yeah. a few plays. And the ones and the one that he did, it was like a pass interference where it was like a badly thrown ball, but also Banks kind of like assaulted Rasheed Rice before the ball got there, and that's kind of like an issue of his a yeah, little bit. And then Michigan and, and Michigan State went back and, and rewatched those games. So I actually don't like the trade-up, and it's for me it's not because, oh, well, it's a fifth and seventh rounder. Can't have those fifth and seventh rounder. One, it's, I'm with the philosophy of having more darts. Now, the seventh rounder I don't give a damn about, like mm-hmm. if they trade the seventh. But the fifth rounder was their first fifth rounder, pick 160. So, again, a, a top 160 player uh, – and to me, with when the like if the if a wide receiver was there, if Zay Flowers was there, Addison was there, then yeah. But for me, with Deontay Banks, and obviously this is personal preference, I would not have traded up for Deontay Banks, even though you're not giving up to, a ton. Uh, to me, the board had because everything kind of went haywire before there, and then the wide receivers were off the board. I think you had some really good players. Still very much on the board. You know, we can have a conversation about what happened with Joey Porter Jr. 
um, you know, Miles Murphy. Like there was, you know, maybe not position of need. And Joe Shane mentioned that, like, yeah, if it wasn't, if we didn't get Deontay Banks, we weren't going to get the positions that everybody wanted, which was essentially wide receiver yeah, and corner. Corner, yeah. But to me, I, I would have obviously maybe the Cowboys or whatever would have traded up for Deontay Banks, but I would have been okay with that and living with whatever the best player available would have been after that. Yeah, I, I don't mind the trade uh, r- really, really at all. Um, it really is, I guess, the the argument is the player. You know, if you had a player preference, uh, I'm actually glad that Joey Porter Jr. was not taken in the first round because in the moment you're like, well, you think that Joey Porter Jr. with those 34-inch arms and just being a more physical player um, fits Wink Martindale better, but I'm glad that the rest of the NFL is clearly seeing something with him where he is not even taken yet. Yeah, so I, I want to know what's going sign. on with him because, yeah, there's some like uh, some stuff about some you know lateral speed, but it's it's there's not be bad. Something more, yeah, there, there has to be something more because it's like if you want to say, oh well, he's he's grabby. Well, Deontay Banks grabs a lot yeah. more than Joey Porter Jr. Sure. did. Where Absolutely. Joey Porter Jr. was more physical at right. this, you know, through within that five yard limit that you're allowed. Obviously, a little more than that times, but like. As far as just being grabby, Deontay Banks is a more grabby corner. Yeah, but about Porter's the, a more physical one, but Gr- Banks is a, is a more grabby corner. Yeah, but about the trade, and this is why I'm fine with it, and then there's also another area where you cannot be fine with it. We heard Joe Shane, we heard from Joe Shane how the roster is in a much different spot this year than last year. They desperately needed every single bullet that they can get to add to the roster with having zero cap last year, right? This year, there's more depth, and to ensure they got their guy, especially when they were feeling the heat of the guys going off the board, I'm fine with it. You know, maybe that's the, maybe that's a critique, too, of they felt the heat and they felt the pressure in the war room that guys were flying off their board. And I mean, I'm Joe not, Shane basically said that. Yeah, he basically did, and maybe that's the critique. But again, it's like a fifth-round pick, and it's a seventh-round pick. Yeah, it's it's... Those guys are obvious, most likely not going to turn into good players. But yeah. again, that is the whole, you know, process of like, yeah. hey, you want to have more, and you want to have throw. bullets, right? Because the because the draft is basically a lottery. The more the more tickets you have, the more likely you're 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 you're, um, you're going to hit, right? Here's the big critique, though. Critique is that the Eagles got Jalen Carter, moved up one pick, and only gave up one pick, which is in 2024 anyway. That's the critique: is that the Giants moved up one pick later in the first round gave up two picks in this year's draft versus the Eagles moving up one pick and also getting Jalen Carter. Like that yeah, was second that's best who player you, in the draft. That's who you moved up for. And the Eagles draft, holy shit, is that another conversation of just <laughs> really more than being like, I'm glad Deontay Banks is a giant and this is really kind of like a pick that we're definitely going to be projecting. And this is like, hey, for me, this is like a Jerome Henderson pick. I thank God Jerome Henderson's the best sec- DB coach and secondary coach in the National Football League. Like the Eagles walking away from night one of the draft and being a Giants fan and having the going up against the Eagles twice a year, it's it's ridiculous. exhausting. It's it's ridiculous. They They're not getting pick. worse. They got that free pick from the Cardinals. Like yeah, the Eagles. I mean, they got Nolan Smith, who is like there's some worries about his size, but it's like like a, come has on, awesome awesome film at, at University yeah. of Georgia. And remember, then Carter has the <laughs> second you know second best player in the draft after Will Anderson Jr. And remember some that think uh, the best player. Remember that uh. That Georgia team last year that we talked about, you know, them being one of the best defensive college football teams of all time. Well, basically, they're all Philadelphia Eagles except Trayvon Walker. Yeah, Trayvon Walker, the one who didn't actually have good film. It was like Jordan Davis last year. Like, man, that guy's a beast. Like, Eagles got a beast in that guy. And then it's like, but this Jalen Carter guy is even better than that guy. And then and then they're able to get him. So the Eagles, the Eagles frustrate me. So, but let, let's go into Deontay yeah, so Banks that's as a the trade. I'm definitely a little bit more okay with it i kind of don't mind it they got their guy i mean I, I don't hate it it's just me personally i wouldn't have done it yeah it's not like uh like i understand that they went and got their guy but for me banks wouldn't have been my guy to do that trade sure all right let's get into him so let's player. let's talk about banks as a player so but we first so it makes more sense but first i do these conversations i do want to do this bobby i do want to do this we have a new sponsor caldera lab that's right take care of your skin People and specifically men, because Caldera Lab, they create high performance men's skincare products by combining pharmaceutical grade science along with nature's purest and most potent ingredients. I have skin that gets very dry, and I am going to count on Caldera Lab and their products to moisturize my skin, get my skin ready 
for the day because they are backed by a leading clinical trial where nine out of 10 men experience healthier and visible improved skin. Caldera Lab has the tools to unlock your best impression, your best first impression and confidence. I'll tell you what, Deontay Banks, this is a player that I'm going to talk about how confidence and having confidence in yourself and what you do well is going to be tremendously important for him and his development. And you want to be confident when you're stepping out on the town with your skin and called Dara Lab will be able to help you out there. So I want you to get 20% off with our code Giants at calderalab.com. They have a bunch of different products to make sure that you're taking care of your skin, whether you have dry skin, oily skin. That's 20% off at calderalab.com. By using code Giants, unlock your youthful glow and be ready for summer with Caldera Lab. Bobby Skinner, you'll be glad you did. I love Caldera Lab. Um, so let's talk about the the role that they're going to want for Deontay Banks and then him as a player. So obviously he is a great athlete, right? That testing and stuff. Awesome. Um, That's why you drafted him. You know, and I think he can play more athletic. I think there's times where it's like, man, you have the athleticism, play with it a little more. Um, and again, played mostly man coverage at Maryland. Obviously, Wink Martindale likes to run his man coverage, and he has the profile to play man coverage. But I do think that right now he is more consistently good in zone. Now, again, his highlight plays will be in man coverage. Like, there are some really nice highlight plays that he has uh, in man coverage. Not like as a ball hawk, you know, getting interceptions. You know, he didn't get two career interceptions. Yeah, one was in 2019. Um, but, you know, making plays on the ball and, and having some really good press, like, jam reps. Um, so they're drafting him to be a man cover, and his highlights are that. But there's also a lot, a lot that has to improve in his game when you go and watch him. And to me, it starts at the release of the at the line of scrimmage. Totally, he really, really struggles at the release, which is why I, you know I have him as a high second round player for a guy who fits this athletic profile and went twenty five with this athletic profile. Like really struggles at the release, and it will have him consistently playing from behind, you know, and that will have him get beat deep. Now, there's a stat out there that he didn't give up a play over thirty yards this season. Well. We saw it on film a lot. A lot of times, he would just straight up tackle guys, yes, like just, man. just, and and got, and again, got those eight penalties. Um, and then other times, the quarterback just doesn't throw the ball to him. But then he would get beat off the release and and get sacked, where that wide receiver gets on top of him, and then he would get beat in the slants or the yeah. curls because he has to overextend and try, um, and and try and recover on that and recovering isn't his strength right now obviously he has the profile to do it because when he's playing with cushion or playing from behind he kind of floats with the play and doesn't close that gap where it's like man fight to get that inside leverage and he just doesn't really do that all the time but why they did draft him is because when it's right it's right yeah you know like he has some now i don't want to put too much stock in these plays and i'll, I'll clip these and put these on social media friday morning Versus Ohio State, this was towards the end of the game. He had some really great jams, like yeah. jam guys up, including one versus uh, versus Marvin Harrison Jr., mm -hmm. who we really like. And he had some, like he had some really good reps versus Marvin Harrison Jr. Like a guy like Keely Ringo got smoked by Marvin Harrison Jr. Like didn't have really anything good. Now he got beat by him a couple times, but Banks had had those good reps against them. Um, and if he doesn't lose the release, which he does more than he doesn't. Like he he does lose the release more more times than he doesn't. He does stay well connected, but right now, when I see him in zone, he just is able to play freer. Like he has better instincts in zone. Uh, he passes things up, and he's like more aggressive to like get out of that back pedal and come up and play because again he understands like hey this is my zone I can play aggressive in it. Yeah. Where in man it's like there's some times where it's like he again, will get beat on the release or if he's playing from off coverage and he'll just stay in his back pedal instead of trying to close that cushion. Like, watch a guy like Emmanuel Forbes who went really high in this draft. Forbes would play off coverage. He would close that cushion really yeah. well and then get in, you know, fight for that inside leverage if they did, you know, get a quick breaker or verse off coverage where he would just kind of keep that cushion underneath. So that's where – and I got some heat for this take where I'm like, he's better in zone than man. We're like, no, oh, he's a man corner. He's a man corner. Yeah, I know. He played mostly man at, at, at uh, Maryland, and his highlights are man coverage. But right now, you put him in the NFL, and listen, rookie struggle, but he's not going to be a good man corner. He will be better in zone 
right away, obviously there's going to be some coaching up and stuff. But like that, right now, that's where he is. And luckily, he's on a team that has Adore Jackson, where he's not on a cornerback desperate team. Even though we are desperate for corners, where it's yeah. like, all right, here you are, go cover wide receiver one day one. Yeah, dude, th- there's a there's a fine line with Deontay Banks and his expectation for this year, and. Really, a lot of the – maybe besides wide receiver, if you draft a wide receiver in the first round, that wide receiver is expected to go right away. But it, a lot of the positions that the Giants you know, could draft on their team, it's not – you're not thrown in there to and expected to be the number one guy. And that is a good thing. It's a good thing that Deontay Banks is a draft pick that you're not expecting him to be at his best or really fully contribute or we're going to see what we got in you, kid, in the year 2023. This is – I think this is a projection pick. Because I, I do think there's going to take time, and especially with corner and, and drafting corners in the first round scare me, regardless of the player, regardless of the player. you know. And we've been bitten by that bug plenty of times as Giants fans in the past, right? But Deontay Banks, it's he's an investment. I'll, I'll give you some some of my thoughts after watching you know a couple games myself again. Um, knows how to use independent hands and reroute receivers, and he can really pack a punch at times. His aggressiveness is also his downfall, and we've talked about that. Here's the thing, and here's where I really like him. If receivers are running clean streaks or even clean routes off the line of scrimmage or even some like comeback routes, right, they don't add any fancy nuance to their routes. He mirrors well, and I think that's where you can see the speed and the change of direction keep up, keeps up really with come anybody. in. Yeah. yeah, but it's when you see some of the receivers start to add the nuance to the route running, and especially if they want to maybe alter the timing of their release at the line, that's where Banks can get in trouble. So here's my question to you. I'm having this debate in my head. Natural awareness and feel, you can make an argument that kind of losing at the line of scrimmage, not being aware of what's going on at the snap of the ball, you can have all the natural speed in the world, but if you're going to fall behind early and then you're going to start grabbing, that's a bad recipe. You know, it's a bad recipe for success, right? Right. So where are you with Deontay Banks right now? Do you feel like some of those issues is a natural awareness and feel issue, or is it a technique and footwork issue and something that you can coach, and we trust Jerome Henderson that he, that he can coach this guy up? Well, I'm very happy that Jerome Henderson and Wink Martindale are the coaches. Oh, I'm so happy. We saw Cordell Flott get you know, coached up and be playable yeah. towards the end of the season. So it's definitely coachable, but I do worry that, like, there's going to be some issues that are just long-lasting. Mm-hmm. You know, and again, we, this is weird for us as Giants fans picking at 25 where it's like you, we're picking the top 10, we're expecting blue-chip yeah. guys. We're pick 25, like if you if you get a solid starter, like it's not a horrible pick, right? Um, you know, and but with Banks, it's, he has the profile to become a star, but I, 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 I'm not super confident that he's going to realize, um, you know, that, that ability. Uh Again, there is like some footwork stuff and like that, and you know, playing with more confidence. But I do worry, like again, losing the release, you can get better at that. But when he does lose the release, he's just kind of like overextending and will, like you said, like any type of route sell, any type of tempo will throw him off. Yeah, you know where he's playing from behind in his. And I would like to see him like out of his back pedal, like be more aggressive, play, you know, pounce out of that back pedal. And there's times like where. Even like versus Michigan, like they had a t- yeah Luke Shane Shoemaker, the tight end, where it's like he's running a speed out on you. It's like man, you should be trying to pounce on that play, yeah. right? Where in zone coverage you see that, which is gives you hope for. Him. Like in zone coverage, he looks like a much more free player. Like I'll jump the flat, you know. Or there was a time where it's like they ran a seam uh, in the slot and then a deep curl on the outside. He was on the outside. He closes that cushion and runs with that sl- that seam up uh, with the slot and is able to cover that up. Um, you know, and it actually plays the two man game a little bit well. Uh, he does look pretty comfortable in zone, even passing some stuff off. Yes, yes. So that's the thing is like we get we kind of we got to get him playing essentially like trusting what you are athletically and playing more free because yeah. when he's an off man, he is not looking to close the cushion. He's like looking to keep it underneath him, and then in press man, he again gets beat at the release. That's something that he's got to get yeah. coached up and worked on, which I think can be coached up on, and that would help a lot of his game, right? Because a lot of the you know a lot of playing cornerback, it's it's the start of the snap, yeah. And then he and if you don't have the athleticism, then it's down the field. He does have that athleticism, so that's the hope. Is you just really got to clean this guy up with the line of scrimmage? Yeah. So let me even ask you this too, because we saw Wink Martindale 
kind of thanks to Darnay Holmes' struggles in man coverage, and teams started to really pick on Darnay Holmes. Obviously, Adoree Jackson goes down, Xavier McKinney goes down towards the latter part of the season, so we saw Wink Martindale adjust and start to play a lot more zone. Do you think that maybe Wink Martindale is getting a you know he he's comfortable with continuing to run a you know a, a little bit more of a versatile defense that maybe leans a little bit more on zone than what he used to do kind of with Baltimore or even the first part of the season with the Giants. He could, but not because of Deontay Banks. Because okay. even though we're talking about this and him being more comfortable in zone, Deontay Banks is a man corner. Like you yeah. and you don't see that much in college, but it was like. 80% of his snaps were in man coverage. And even playing against guys like at, you know, the Ohio State guys, which is ballsy. Like, it's ballsy to play the Ohio State guys um, and man coverage, you know. And it led to some penalties and, and some catches given up. Uh, you know, not even just Marvin Harrison Jr., but other guys. So, it's – it's he is a – he is a – like, he is a man corner. But, again, like I, I've probably repeated this four times, is like you're going to go look at his highlights. I'm like, this is a man cover corner. But when you go watch his game in full, and I have a film breakdown, I'm, I'm, I got the, the the notes for it ready, going to record it after this podcast, you'll see that there's a lot, a lot of negative in, in his man coverage. Yeah. Where in zone, I, I didn't find negative plays in zone coverage, mm-hmm. even though they weren't running zone a ton. You didn't find those negative plays uh, in there. Like there was, you know, yeah. there were, there were, Like the only miscommunication on there was a, another man coverage thing, yeah. so... Uh, I'm for trusting the athleticism and you know you don't draft guys for what they're going to do in 2023 but agreed yes. I will say I will say Banks is a guy who I hope has a confidence and swagger to him and this is really with all corners that are drafted early and maybe have some some issues associated with their game believe in what you believe in what you do and that you do it well because if there are early struggles you're going to need that confidence to get through it, man. Being a first-round pick, the microscope is going to be on Banks, and this isn't the same as drafting an Aaron Robinson, a Cordell Flott, or Darnay Holmes, where there's no expectations. And if they deliver on something, anything in year one, it's a surprise. You kind of want to see somewhat positive play in year one, so it'll be interesting to see if Wink Martindale, the Giants, can put Banks in certain spots to thrive early on, or will NFL teams expose him with the weaknesses that he's got? Yeah, so... If you want to bet on him to win Rookie of the Year, Justin. Oh, it, it's maybe a long shot, but you, you could go to let's draft. Do it. You could go to yeah. draft things, uh, or Why if not? you want to bet on baseball, because guess what? The baseball season is in full swing. Mm. Whether you're rooting for the home team or betting on your favorite player, DraftKings Sportsbook has got you covered for all the season's action. Right now, new customers can place a $5 pregame money line bet and get $150 in bonus bets if your team wins. Plus, everyone can hit one out of the park with DraftKings stepped-up same-game parlays. Boost your winnings with each leg. Uh, you add up to 100%. Um, again, go look at uh, the Deontay Banks. The Devils-Rangers, Game 6. Listen, did the Devils totally smoke the Rangers? Did they dominate them? Mm. Yeah, but... Go check out the line. Maybe you want to bet the Rangers. I personally probably want it, but dumb decision. Dumb. So join the big league action now on DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app and sign up with code World. Mm. New customers can bet just five dollars on any pregame money line and get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets if their team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code World. Gambling problem, call, gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Massachusetts, call 800-327-5050 or visit gambling helpline in ma.org in new york call 8778 hope ny or text hope ny in kansas call 1-800-522-4700 on behalf of boot hill casino and resort kansas 21 plus in most eligible states but age varies by jurisdiction eligibility or strict supply see draftkings.com slash uh, slash sportsbook for details and state specific responsible gambling resources you'll be glad you did and speed so I want to pull up a tweet I had when I did my first evaluation on Deontay Banks. Sure. <clears throat> and it's kind of funny with the video that came out from the Giants. Yeah. So I put out Maryland cornerback Deontay Banks ran a 4 3 5 40 with a 42-inch vertical at the combine. Pretty damn good. His athleticism and production is as is easy to see on film but some big negatives in his game like letting wide receivers work to blind spots and break open off breaks he's definitely a cornerback i can see wink martindale wanting to mold Mm. and then you get the you get the video 
probably can't see it from here of Wink Martindale like celebrating and hugging Joe Shane. Yeah, that was a big hug. Without the sleeves and out the hat. That was very weird to see Wink Martindale like that. It made him look a little bit vulnerable. First time, well, I'll tell you what, seeing Wink Martindale's arms didn't make him look vulnerable. That was the first time I ever saw like his forearms. He's a yoked dude. He's a yoked, uh, yoked is maybe not a right word. He's such a unique human being. I like him. I love him. I'm glad he's happy. So with, and this is, okay, so this is, I'm going to bring up some more cause for concern. Sure. Is you mentioned like the confidence and stuff like that. Yeah, he's got to have it. Is, I hope he has it. Ha, it's one thing to get beat and have the, but hey, I have the, I have the confidence to recover. I'm telling you, do not come at me with the no 30 plus yard uh, passes given up. Because you're going to see on the film breakdown, the dude, when he gets beat and the ball is coming his way, will straight up tackle yeah. wide receivers. It's not pretty And just times. mug them. Where it's like, how did you ever think that this was going, you're going yeah. to get away with this? You know, it's like, so crazy how you, you said when he's right, he's right. And, you know, I, I kind of said that before we recorded. And I was kind of like laughed at a little bit. But I mean, it, it, it kind of is true. The pretty plays are really pretty. And what they don't do on highlights on highlight reels is they won't put the low lights in and you know there unfortunately there just are some of those plays in there and a, again this is and, a this is a Jerome Henderson like don't take a defensive coordinator job anywhere pick because we 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 got to have you around and, yeah. for a hot sec to you know to coach up Deontay and that's fine like I, that that's fine you know i i hope this There's isn't a, a lot of to me i have like a lot of personal pressure on Jerome Henderson to get and yeah. Jerome Henderson has done it. Yeah. Like and what that's they were able to do like, with Fabian Moreau it. last year. You know, if you even go back to Patrick Graham getting Isaac Yadam where, he was, Come where on. he was playable. You know, coaching up Cordell Flott. So mm-hmm. what has Isaac Yadam and, done in the and, National Football League since be a number two starting cornerback for the Giants in twenty twenty with a very, very good defense that year? Where is he? I don't Can't know. Can't tell you. Um so again with that you know that weight that kind of like comes a lot of responsibility, and I'm sure Jerome Henderson was obviously a big part yeah, of. But it's part of this coaching. It's part of the having a good coaching staff. It's part of their responsibility too. Yeah, which so, I, I don't mind putting it on. So them. the yeah, so and it's like, hey, you got an elite athlete. You know, it's yeah. one thing to be like, hey, this guy doesn't have the speed to break with these guys, this and guy he's does, and he and he has technical issues. Does, doesn't have the change of direction stuff. What we yeah. can coach up, what we can. The thing you with can't coach, guy, he's got it. With this guy, you traded up to get this pick. Obviously, not like a big huge trade up. He has that elite ability. So you're putting your stamp of approval. Like, this guy has to work out really well. And that's and that's why, again, the worries I have is not that, hey, sometimes he gets beats off the release. or so, It's just like when it starts bad, it gets worse and worse throughout the route. Sure. Like, there wasn't like, ah. Like, so Darius Rush, obviously a lesser corner than Deontay Banks. There's issues he has. But it's like he recovered really well, played with confidence. I don't see that with Deontay Banks. And part of that, like – Guys who grab and stuff like that, those are that's the type of stuff that I worry about long term. And he plays a position. If you have a wide receiver who, hey, he's he's got got really good plays, five six plays a game, not good at corner. You have seven to nine <laughs> plays a game like that, and you're giving up you're giving up seventy five yards a game. Yeah, right. You know, so and NFL teams aren't afraid to just continuously. Do the same teams thing gonna, over and over again. Yeah, teams are going to coach like like they are going to game plan for that. So yeah. there is like if he doesn't have rookie struggles, I'd be shocked. Like I, I'd be shocked. Um, but the Giants are in a interesting scenario. It, it, so they're walking we can talk a tightrope. The alignment with the I exactly corners. that's exactly what I was going to go. So Doug Analytics tweeted out current New York Giants cornerbacks last year under contract. Um, so kind of like looking at the future of the room. You don't take Deontay Banks just for what he can do in 2023, but you're taking him for what he can do 2024, 2025, 2026. You take a cornerback in the first round, the expectation is that he's going to be your number one corner. You know, maybe not this year, but, you know, 2024 and beyond, maybe that is the expectation. Definitely 2025, right? That's that's the projection. So, but at least for this year, he's in an interesting spot. It's in a, It's a good spot, though, because you can have – him competing with Cordell Flott for outside outside cornerback time, where Cordell Flott should be expected to take on more. Is Cordell Flott specifically and only going to be in the slot? Can he go outside, inside versatility? Can he play both at the same time while Deontay Banks is getting some experience on the outside? Because Deontay Banks should not 
be just solely relied upon as like this backup this year. You're a first round pick. You should be expected to go out there and play your one. But how much and how much responsibility do the Giants want to put on him? Yeah, and but here's my thing is you drafted this guy to be an outside corner. Even if he doesn't start right away, you drafted Cordell Flott a year ago. Mm -hmm. I am bringing Cordell Flott back into the slot. Sure. I am. Because, you know, right now it's Darnay Holmes still. And that's an issue. And Cordell Flott is someone we have some hope for. And and Flott Corner is, I mean, it's it's easier to play than outside. It's a starting position, but it's just a fact that it's it's an easier position to play than on the outside. Now it's a little more difficult in a Wink Martindale defense because you're still being put in so, much, so many man coverage reps. But... Like right now, that would be my alignment, and I would move Aaron Robinson back in the slot as depth. Yeah, like you drafted this guy at twenty five. Like, hey, go get out and you know bring in some Fabian Moreau type veteran. That if if um, if Banks isn't ready to go week one, you don't have to throw, you don't have to force him out there and, and have him like go through all those issues and struggles, and you know work, you know can work on his game and rotate in. But to me, I, I'm moving Cordell Flop back in the slot. And I know Aaron Robinson's got injuries, but like there was once a time where he was a player we had some hope for in the slot, yeah. like with the physicality that he plays with, like that it would fit. So get some depth there. So I'm I'm bringing Cordell Flott and Aaron Robinson back in the slot. I'd like to get an outside corner, and honestly, I might cut Darnay Holmes because he has yeah. that he got the raise because of his playing time, and you only save a million and a half. But when you signed Ashawn Robinson, something's got to happen with Leonard Williams. That could be a cut candidate at fifty three man cut down day. Yeah, sure. If, with it, now guys get hurt and that shit changes really quick. But that's kind of where my mind is at right now with the cornerback position. Yeah. They have Aaron Robinson, Rodarius Williams, Cordell Flott, Leonard Johnson, and Deontay Banks on their roster after this year. So from twenty twenty four on until 2026 with that fifth year option in 2027 as well. Those are the five corners that they have on the roster. So basically, you know, Aaron Robinson, Rodarius Williams, their contracts expire in 2024. Next year, Cordell Flott, 2025, and then Deontay Banks, 2026 with Adoree Jackson, Darnay Holmes, Amani Aurorier, Nick McLeod, and Zion Gilbert. I forgot about Amani Aurorier. Yeah. Um, so well, I mean, we, we kind of predicted he may not even make the team. But, but he could be the guy, even though he's not great, he could be the guy that you're the starter week one while Deontay Banks yeah. works on his so game. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's they have ten cornerbacks on the roster right now. I'm I'm not I, I'm not giving up on the Giants thinking that Cordell Flock can be an outside corner and develop into that. I'm not giving up on that yet. <sighs> but I just I just want to see him play to his strengths. Yeah. Why can't he do both this year? Is, is that like is that like just like fan talk of oh yeah he can have inside outside versatility and and learn the slot and yeah, play but then outside? Then, then that's as a backup, right? If hey, if and the, again, we're, this is the round one recap. We don't need to go into a full analysis of where does yeah, Cordell Flop play next it. year. You know, maybe the beat the beat could ask about that. Um, in fact, we need to ask. Tweets. We need someone tweeted the beat. Asked what the plan if if Deontay Banks changes the plans with Cordell Flott playing back in the slot. Sure. So, tweeted the beat that uh, today, so we could get that answer after they answer their uh, after Joe Shane talks to the media after after tonight's uh, draft. Tweeted the beat. Um, <clears throat> that rhymes. Yeah. Tweet, Rolls well off the tongue. Tweet at the beat. That tweet at the be beat. A new segment on Talking Giants. <laughs> yeah. Um. So anything else like individually on Deontay Banks as a player that you have? I know we you know. So like I, I guess I can. Can I just read my write up on him just real quick, just to kind yeah. of put it out there? Yeah, sure. Um, great athlete who moves around the field effortlessly in both man and zone. Long speed, uh, long speed is great, but worry about getting beat vertically. Uh, good change of direction and break on the ball. Effortless back pedal and can explode out of it. Loses the release and man way too often and is playing from behind. Footwork is iffy and hit or miss and press. Worry about losing vertically and then losing contested catches. Wide receivers work to blind spots easily, and he can be noticeably lost. Great eyes and instincts in zone. Better zone corner now face uh, uh, now facing quarterback. Not a great run defender. And then I had him as a, a B-plus, which from my grading scale is a high second-round pick. Sure. At the end of the day, I talked a lot about trump cards um, during the draft preview month. Deontay Banks... His trump card is his speed and his change of direction, and he does that better than a lot of 
corners in this class, and that is something that the Giants are betting on. It's something that they're betting on as a team. They are betting on a team full of athletes that can move fast and they are quick. That is what they are betting on. Um, and at the end of the day, we'll we'll see how it works, Bobby Skinner. So, and with Deontay Banks, if he does struggle as a rookie, there has to be some type of grace period because again, there's issues. But he has the athleticism now. Doesn't doesn't mean if he struggles that he's automatically going to be good just because he's athletic. We see that you know being athletic does not make you a good football player. Um, but there there needs to be some growth period and growth period. Our grace period and growth period with with Deontay Banks yeah. with a lot of corners too. This isn't even just a Deontay Banks I mean, we're thing. We're picking at twenty five. This is very weird for us as Giants fans, where it's like blue chips. But even you know last year, you pick Evan Neal seventh overall. He really struggled yeah. as a rookie. So yeah, the, the NFL is not an easy game to play, and especially especially as it, wide receivers get better and better. When it's a passing league, wide receivers are getting better. Um, you know, corners it takes a while for them to adjust anyway. You know, we we've seen some slam dunk corners. Um, really struggle, and we've seen some guys thrive. So hopefully, uh, Deontay Banks is a guy that thrives. Before we talk about, I think are we ready to move to like second round second targets. round targets? Can yeah. I talk about something? I'm going to talk about one more thing this episode. Talk about it, and I'm going to talk about Manscape. They are back for the third year in a row. They are sponsoring our draft streams, with which really means a lot. Like that means a lot to to Bobby and I. You know, the longer that we do this, and we have you know, kind of people come back that appreciate what we do. And we appreciate what Manscaped does. They're evolving just like the Giants are evolving. Manscaped is evolving because I have this shirt. Your balls will thank you. Okay. Yeah. That could still be the slogan, but it's also your face will thank you. And basically everywhere, everywhere on your body, men's hygiene, Manscaped has got you because they've got the lawnmower 4.0. Of course, of course, but in 2023, they have the Beard Hedger to ensure the face of your franchise is a pretty one. That's right. The Beard Hedger and the Lawnmower 4.0, they're a franchise-changing combo that will have you looking at your roster with pride, your face and your balls. So you look at it with pride. The Lawnmower Skin Safe technology reduces your nicks and snags while making all the right cuts on hair. In the Beard, in the beard Hedger, it has 20 positions of 20 positions of different precision this power this powerful cordless trimmer helps you customize your look with the rotary wheel that has 20 lengths while only using one guard if you haven't upgraded your grooming tools already head to manscaped for a champion worthy roster reset get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code giants at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off plus free shipping at manscaped.com when you use code giants go from mr irrelevant to a first round pick with manscaped you'll be glad you did bobby skinner We'd be glad you did. So obviously, we're at pick fifty-seven, so we can't put together our like ten-man big board like we yeah. usually can for. But just want to go through some names. Um, one, it'd be uh, what happens with Joey Porter Jr. Because again, like, is he a perfect prospect? No, but I'd, I he to me he's a first-round prospect. Like absolutely, something's with, up without a doubt. Something's up. Um, like he plays like an alpha. Like he controls the sideline again. Like. Can he be get beat on drags and stuff? Yeah, but a part of that was the Penn State scheme, you know, and we'll see. And again, like like we said at the top of the show, the whole, oh, he's grabby, he's grabby. There's a, he's physical. Like he knows how to be physical and get away with it. Where there's Banks, Cam Smith, who they they don't know how. So that can't be the reason. Because I like if that's the case, then JC Horn isn't gonna get drafted a couple of years ago. So Brian Branch, your guy, fell. That 40 time killed him. Like, it's it's almost Xavier McKinney 2.0. It, it could Branch. also be the position of safety, too, it's, which it, I can say. It's the, it's it, it, like, like with McKinney, it's really it's the same exact thing where yeah. it's like, didn't have an elite testing, plays a safety position. You worry because maybe Alabama guy scheme stuff, and he didn't go. Um, everyone's going to say the wide receivers because the Giants obviously wanted one. I, well, yeah, that's like that's where my brain goes. My brain goes to like tomorrow, some of these wide receivers that I maybe didn't get a great look at, um, you know, like uh, Marvin Mims, you know, I, I like a, uh, you know, a Josh Downs, like the Cincinnati guys, yeah, Trey Trey Tucker, Ming, Mingo Trey Tucker and Tyler yeah. or, uh, Tyler Scott, yeah. So I'm like looking at those guys and I'm trying to see if I can get a get a read on <clears> what they're about because clearly the Giants wanted wide receiver. Mingo is the one that. I would want the most. Sure. 
Um, I'm down. You know, you know, I'm down. Everybody knows. I I'm obviously down for really that. like At Perry, but with the age and stuff, I, I I don't. I think I like other players there on the board. Marvin Mims would be fine. Obviously, the scheme worries you a little bit. Even though Jalen Hyatt is like, we all saw he's not a first round pick. He even worries me at 57, but he does have that speed. You could take a chance there. Um, to me, I look at the offensive line, especially okay. with what the Eagles did. And I, I, I'm not a big believer of doing something, <laughs> drafting someone because of what your division did. <laughs> it's got to make you think about it, though. But you got John Michael Smith, <laughs> hasn't been taken, Osiris Torrance, and Steve Avila. Like, we talk about trading up. Like, like John Michael Smith is going to be a good offensive lineman in the NFL. Like so I would, I, like, I, think, I think all three of them are going to be good offensive linemen in the like, NFL. I would, I would be willing to trade up for John Michael Smith at this point. Okay, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know what that would take, but I, I, I would be willing. Part of me, re- part of me wanted them to trade back tonight. <laughs> me too, especially I mean, when the, Miles Murphy yeah. went to the Bengals. You know, uh, Brian Brzee went uh, to the Saints, so. Um, but especially with the run, Nolan's freaking Smith went to the Eagles at thirty. Yeah, dude, I, I want to. I, I hate to talk about it again, and I guarantee we're even going to get some comments of like, "Why are you spending two minutes talking about the Eagles at the top of a Giants show?" That was demoralizing. Is a strong word. That was super fucking frustrating. The awesome night that they had. Crazy. They they and it seems like not every year. Mozzie Smith. But they just let and then yeah, even he goes to the Cowboys. Cowboys and it's like, great, yeah, that that one. makes sense. You know, maybe a little bit of like, oh, he's not a consensus first round pick, but yeah, that makes sense for them. Just strong as hell. Yeah. Um, but I mean the Eagles just let the draft board come to them. And they're like, Yeah, we're just gonna take a good player here that maybe you're overthinking a little bit. And maybe Jalen Carter has like concerns and maybe he is like not a hard worker and he's gonna get in trouble, but he's in, that's insane, man. They got Jalen Carter at ten. Oh, nine. Or nine. They traded nine. up with the Bears. Oh, yeah. They gave, they gave next year's fucking. Um, pick. other names, obviously Jonathan Mingo, uh, B.J. Ojolari, Drew Sanders would be a good spot for him at fifty-seven. Uh, and this is where you know I wasn't as high as on this guy as everyone else, but at fifty-seven. Uh, out of Timiwa Adabari, the the Northwestern yeah. guy, this, yeah. that would be a good spot for him. And I will say this: make a strength of strength, Tyreek Stevenson. Like I still love my boy Tyreek Stevenson. If he if he that'd like be seven. wild. Por- Joey Porter Jr. Like if he f- is there at fifty seven, then we have our answer. It's something medical. If he gets medical, picked, okay. if he gets picked in the fir- in the top four picks. It's like, hey, the NFL just didn't value him the way that uh, yeah. draft analysts did. If he goes, if he's there at fifty-seven, there's not medical, but like there's something that we don't know at the public about. Joey I, Porter I, Jr. I think right now there's like something Nick, that we like don't know. Like Nicobe Dean, I think right now there's something yeah, we we'll don't know. See. You know, this is a guy that was projected to go top fifteen. Well, Justin, remember when I took him in the? Uh, I took him in the post senior bowl mock draft yeah and i got comments of like let's get more realistic yeah <laughs> like i was like man i was really disappointed like i wanted to like hear a more realistic option for for the giants at pick 25 joey well, porter jr is definitely not going to be there so well, there you um, go we know nothing yeah we really know nothing so every year they say the draft like this is going to be a surprise this one was more surprising than most years we're, um, we're like last year everyone there's gonna be a huge surprise like they're the only surprise was freaking the patriots with uh cole strange uh, the year before, going to be a big spur- – there, there wasn't any big What summer. exactly was – the players that I thought would be taken were taken, besides Joey Porter Jr. and and maybe – it doesn't surprise me that Will Levis wasn't taken. Sorry. Um, the Lions with Gibbs and Campbell. I don't hate the Campbell pick as much as other people do, but Gibbs is kind of wild there. Those are – yeah. Uh, yes, Will McDonald I'll give you that. to the Jets, I hate that pick. I, I haven't disliked the first-round pick as much as People I have. have been talking about McDonald as a first-round pick. That, that – that doesn't surprise me that some team bit the bullet on that. Forbes doesn't surprise me, but it is higher than we went. Christian Gonzalez. Forbes, Forbes has been getting I mean, Forbes might be for more Christian Gonzalez. I, I'm, by the way, you say that like week of draft rumors is not the week to believe draft rumors. I subscribe. I guess it depends which ones because Will Levis started to become a number two pick like two days before the draft. But Emmanuel Forbes, like a week before the draft, suddenly became a first round pick. And that was that happened. Yeah. Um, we don't know anything. 
And that's what's so fun about the NFL draft. You <laughs> All know right. nothing. All right, so I'll have a film breakdown of this at 11 a.m., so maybe it's out when you're listening to this. We'll be live for the rest of the draft, obviously, uh, Friday night and then all day Saturday. Yeah. I will say. Film breakdowns on every player, and then we'll have our full draft recap yeah. out Monday morning for you. Yeah, I, I will say. I, I know this isn't the exact time to get sentimental on a first-round recap pod, but. you got to save that for the full draft recap pod. But, I mean, the fact that we had like 3,000 people at one point, like for the Giants pick at pick 25 is pretty freaking cool. So I, I got to thank the Talking Giants versus the world community that we got out there. It's pretty cool. We were on Bleacher Report, too. Um, they had some technical issues, not us. But it wasn't until like 1145. It wasn't so until we like after the pick and everything like that. But it made me feel good. It's like, oh, we did not have technical issues. Yeah. But uh, um, thank you to everybody. That was super awesome. We're going to run it back. We're going to do it for the rest of the weekend. Um, Bobby Let's Skinner's going to have film breakdowns and you know we'll have the draft recap pod out on monday all right we appreciate you guys we will see you on monday and but in between then until then let's go big blue